usually when I'm not creating, my mind's just a mess. How old were you when you started getting into painting? Uh, actually, I didn't paint until uh, I went to college. Is that right? I, yeah, I'd always, I would always draw. I was a big drawler. Okay. And uh, our, in high school, we didn't have the funds necessarily to have like kids painting and stuff like that. Yeah. So we, uh, we basically did uh, a lot of drawing, pen and ink, stuff like that. Okay. And uh, yeah, it wasn't until we did like after school classes. I think I painted maybe once or twice after school with, with my art teacher. And, uh, but I didn't really get into it till, till college. Hmm. Yeah. You from around here? Uh, I grew up in uh, Cape May, New Jersey. Oh, okay. Yeah, so moved to go to the peak head. But uh, yeah, well, with our uh, foundation year, they made us do everything. So we had to paint and we had to do photography and all that stuff. So that was kind of, that was really cool. I think that helped a lot. Is that about like when it clicked for you where you're like, oh, this is, this is fun? Yeah, kind of stopped drawing. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> now drawing all these years before that, I mean, is that, I mean, a lot of your work seems very line driven. Uh, is that is that been a big influence into your paintings? Uh, I guess looking at it, yeah, I think so. I mean, I constantly still draw, but, uh, you know, in a notebook or whatever, before I paint something. Sure. But, uh, yeah, I kind of, maybe through comic books, you know, growing up, doing a lot of comic book stuff, mm -hmm. I think that has an influence on at least the hard line uh, in my work. Sure. So, let me ask you this. When, what eight, how old were you when you realized that you might not see colors the same as everybody else? Um, I think they gave me the test when I was in fifth or sixth grade. Okay. And they really didn't say anything. They just, uh, they just gave, a note, or gave me a note to give to my mom. And I went home and I was like, I think I'm colorblind. <laughs> so. And you didn't have any idea before that? No. Yeah, my mom always said that I dress really funny. And... Uh, <laughs> Like different, I didn't match ever. So after that, she we finally f figured out a way to dress where, no matter what I wore, it matched. So <laughs> you can see some colors. Yes. Yeah. Can you explain that to us kind of what you can and can't see? What's a struggle? Uh, it depends. Um, definitely really bright colors, obviously, uh, which in my work, uh, there's a lot of that. But uh, yellow is a definite one. I have no problem seeing yellow, unless it's uh, muted or something like that. I get confused with it. But it's basically, I guess it would be red, green, the basic red, green, blue. Like uh, like even like that painting up there, like the, the bright red. Uh, I could e That could easily be brown. I wouldn't know the difference. Really? Yeah. So, and then a lot, a lot of greens. It's uh, mostly like, I guess it would be like almost pastel colors are very hard. But, uh, you know, I can see some blues and, uh, yeah, definitely yellows, but some colors just, I just can't see at all. Sure. Yeah. So. so do you stick with, I guess, then colors that you can see in your work or yeah. do no, you I'm ask not. someone like, hey, what color is this? Uh, yeah, sometimes. I mean, yeah, sometimes I'll ask for help. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I use basic colors. But I don't go into it thinking uh, if I'm gonna, what colors I'm gonna use. So, you know, after the underpainting, uh, I usually stick with bright colors, but, you know, I'll paint some, something once, and then uh, if it doesn't look right, you know, I'll go back into it with another color or brighten it up a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I never know what colors it's gonna be until, until it's done. Yeah. So the painting kind of creates itself. Yeah, I mean, I always stick. I mean, recently in the last couple of years, I've stuck with flat background and image, and uh, usually I always do like a bright background or a solid color background. But that it was never a reason because of being colorblind. I just like that how that looks. Sure. Yeah, I mean, just, I just like how it pops, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, never really thought about it too much. What artists have influenced your work uh, along the way? I uh, always liked pop art. Uh, pop art was always big. I mean, I, before college, 
you know, I didn't, I think my high school or my uh, senior year, I didn't even know Monet was a, was a man. Oh, really? <laughs> I mean, I wasn't big, big in the fine art. It was just, I was more like comic books, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, when I went first, you know, in our foundation year, you know, they really forced us to learn a lot of stuff that some of us didn't want to learn. And I think that helped me find artists that influenced me. Yeah. And uh, one of the things, projects we had to do in our foundation year was uh, we had to pick, basically pick artists that we liked and recreate their paintings. And I think that helped a lot too. And I found like Picasso and uh, even Monet and uh, a couple other, you know, pop arts or even uh, Cubist artists. I really, really interested in how they, uh, you know, had an image and distorted it to make it even prettier image. Mm -hmm. You know, I always liked that about abstract art, and especially about Picasso. I mean, but I, I think I like them all, you know, most 20th century artists. So what, what, I mean, in college you had the direction to either go fine art or illustration. It sounds like a lot of your interest was in uh, comic books and illustration. Yeah. What steered you towards fine art? You know, I don't have no clue. <laughs> no, it, it, when we were forced to pick our major or we, what we wanted to do, I was torn between illustration, graphic design, and uh, fine art. But then I realized if I took fine art, I can I can do any art I want. You know, it was just it was one of those things where. I really started getting into painting, and I still, in fine art, I can still draw, you know, I can still do, you know, anything you want, but I didn't want to focus on graph design, illustration, because in illustration, you're still a painter. Sure. So, I mean, why not, and plus, I didn't know a lot about fine art, and uh, I think it really interested me, you know, to go that direction. I mean, I know either... Either way, whatever I picked, I wasn't going to get a great job when I got out of school. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> I knew that was definitely going to happen. Sure. So, I mean, I just went with what I was really interested in at the time. So, where do you get the inspiration for the stuff that you draw now? Uh, I think it's all around. I think it's just life in general. I mean, it's just, sometimes I'll see something or think of something like a monkey and be like, that would look a lot better if it was like purple. <laughs> and then it's paint a monkey. <laughs> Same thing with like the monsters and stuff like that. It's, I don't know, it's kind of like what would I want to put on my wall? I think that's, I get inspiration from that a lot. Or, you know, I also like the fact that some of my paintings are very silly. And uh, uh, Sue has one in her kitchen, the punk rock duck. And she said that, uh, you know, early on when we first started dating, she got it and said that, uh, you know, every morning she walks out there and smiles. And I also like that, giving that to a person too, like where you can hang something up in your place and, uh, you know, if it makes that person happy every day, it makes me happy. I really like that feeling. Yeah, well, your artwork definitely brings out like an emotion, whether it be happy. Yeah, <laughs> or some scary. of the paintings that people are just like, I can't even stand looking at that thing. Yeah. And that's that still makes me happy. That's the point, you know, <laughs> making something to bring out a reaction in somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. yeah, and it doesn't have to be, you know, like a bad reaction or it doesn't have to be offensive or anything. It just I just like the a reaction, the happy or whatever. I mean Sure. Either way someone's gonna buy that painting and be like and smile every day at it. That makes me really happy. So being colorblind and being a painter and working with colors, how have you overcome some of that? Like, because uh, you do work with a lot of colors that you still have trouble seeing, and uh, yeah. what steps have you taken? Uh, depending on the painting, like a lot of times I'll, I can p paint a painting and usually, you know, I work on like three or four at a time. And always have, you know, my palette, uh, usually like in Tupperware, the color is already mixed. I'll make notes. A lot of times, uh, especially if I know I'm going to make or be working on a painting more than like a couple days, especially with acrylics, uh, with them drying out. And, you know, if something comes up, but I can't paint the, the finish it up that day. I'll definitely make notes. A lot of times I use the, when I mix the colors, 
I'll do like quarter size, like basically squirt the, you know, the paint or whatever, but I'll do like quarter size, dime, nickel, penny size, so say making like a pink. So it would be like, you know, I put a quarter into, you know, a mixture of white. So that, that helps me like keep measurements wise. I mean, it might not be a, a you know, perfect every time, but uh, most of the time you can't notice. You know, sometimes I'll paint a half a picture or the first layer and I'll go back and mix again and paint the second layer to get it nice and flat and it'll be two different colors. But I won't notice, but if someone, you know, has watched me do it, they're like, oh, love is a different color last time. And uh, it still works though. I mean, it might be slightly off a little bit, but I can't really tell because I can't see the color. Sure. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, so I can't really tell the difference. So, I mean, the end project or product or whatever, it's it's still basically the same as what I was sure. going for. So, uh, when did you start taking notes? Um, when I started getting commissions, uh, when I did a lot of nudes, and I uh, got a lot of commissions for nudes, and uh, obviously you have to make skin tone look like skin tone. And that's one of my hardest thing colors to make is is skin tone. You know, if I buy skin tone, you know, now I can buy skin tone and lighten it up and darken it. But still, sometimes, even if I darken it, sometimes it looks so muddy uh, to someone else. So that's what I started doing, like the whole nickel dime thing. And it was all because you know doing flesh tones. Sure. And because uh, that matters, especially when you're painting like, someone's child. And it's, you know, they're like, why is he so dark? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. that and when you have to mix red and stuff in with it, because, you know, you can get someone, hey, the person will look rosy, you know, and, and I always remember that method. And, you know, when I really want to make a painting, like exactly what's in my head before I start paint or before I start adding color, I kind of started paying more attention to that and stopped being so like, well, whatever the end product is the end product. Like, it doesn't matter. But, you know, there is some things in my head that I want to be perfect on the canvas. Yeah. So I got just got a little more stricter with myself sure. and uh, kind of just really paid attention. And it really paid off when I started looking at the notes and be like, because then I see a painting that I painted before and be like, man, I really like that color. I just go back to the notes and like, oh, that's exactly what I use to make that color. And that I like a lot because I do have favorite paintings and it being color it is very hard to recreate a, a color again, especially when you can see it. Well, looking at your Instagram, you do, it looks like you do other types of art. Like, did I see sculpture on there like you do sculpture as well and like murals around town and things like yeah that. I, I did a mural uh it was part of a project uh i forget what it was called so yes mural. exactly yeah they asked me to do one uh which was funny because it was the biggest one and we needed a week to do where we had you know, i think it was a week to do and i'm still not done it yet because <laughs> i t i told him i was like i'm very anal and very obsessive when it comes to, especially with a mural that someone has to look at. Like, even though I, when you're on the ground, uh, it's pretty much finished, but there, I know there's mistakes in there and it drives me nuts. So even though you can't tell from the ground, because it's actually pretty high up and it was a little difficult working on the ladder. And, uh, but I know they're there. So it's definitely something I'd like to do again, but uh, definitely stressed me out a lot. <laughs> Just thinking about it is very stressful. But uh, th yeah, there was another artist, uh, Mike Wolf, that uh, he was a graphic designer, and he wanted to switch over to sculpture. He went, he had the sculpture in his head that he wanted to make for years, and uh, you know I had all the tools and the space to do it. So we started doing that almost a year ago. When we finished it for the art festival. But I helped him do that because uh, he's never done anything like that before. And then it also brought uh, that feeling back of doing sculpture. You know, I've done in the past, like when I was younger. 
and I just realized how much I, I loved it and just work with my hands. So what happens to you when you don't paint? It's like something you need to do. You're driven to do. Yeah, it's, it's, sometimes it's a curse. Sometimes it's, it's one of those things where it just eats at me if I'm not doing something like that. Or even, even thinking about it or thinking about creating something even helps a little bit. But I know the people around me, uh, especially uh, people that are really close to me, uh, notice more than, maybe more than I do, that uh, I need to do it. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my, my fiance has told me plenty of times, you know, go home and paint. And uh, I listen and, you know, it definitely helps. You know, people around you, you know, tell you that. It just, it's something in me that just needs to be making something all the time. You know, I think that's why I love cooking, you know, at work. I think that's being creative too, you know, even if it's just something very simple. But I just feel like that need in me to have to create. And then you get a high out of it. Like, I wanted to paint rocks, but I didn't want to make it a thing like a... You know, it took me 15 hours, and here's like this little rock. <laughs> I took a bunch of rocks and spray painted them, and then drew hearts on them, a black heart, which still took, you know, like 10 minutes on each rock, or maybe five, but it was still tedious. And uh, because I did, I think the first run, I did 300 rocks. And so it took me, you know, the same time I would do if I painted a rock that could be in a museum, I painted 300 rocks. So it was like, for me, I was like, that's, that's awesome because yeah. now I have 300 rocks I can put places. <laughs> so I would, uh, so I started carrying a giant bag around with rocks and then uh, that got, I started to get sore from that. Yeah, so, so I was like, so I was like, I'm not thinking about this. I don't have to put all 300 rocks out in one day so so that I just start having like five in my bag and not get obsessed with it like I do with other things and I was like I don't have to put these out all one day I'll just put them out every time I'm walking somewhere or recently in the last year we've went you know places to like Philly and stuff and I started taking them with me there too and I'm like I'll just take two just take two rocks and uh, so I'd put them there and, and hashtag and do all that stuff you do on the internet. And uh, so now I just, I just put them around places and uh, places I like, you know, or places just think needs a rock. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I just hope that when, you know, I was, the, when I first did it, I was so worried that, you know, someone's going to pick it up because I did start, I did big ones too. And uh, I was worried that it was going to go through a window or something, and then they'd come back to me, and then I'd feel like an asshole, you know. <laughs> I'm like, I was just trying to just try to spread Make some love, smile. yeah. yeah. So if you're talking about making people smile, the eye bombing is my favorite. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. That is a thing. Yeah, know. I was. Your Instagram posts are hilarious with a. Yeah, I, I don't even know where that came up. I don't know. I don't know how that whole thing started, but. Sue got me like so many of them. I have so many, I, and I'm just like, and I saw someone on Instagram that they were doing that. I'm like, oh, so it's called eye bombing. So then I started researching it a little more. I was like, oh shit. I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> so then I started taking it serious and I was like, I don't want to deface any property or anything. So I was like, maybe I shouldn't go crazy with it. Maybe I should just do it for me just to smile so I did on small places mostly at uh, like city places that like signs and stuff because I know that, you know it's against the law but I know that <laughs> I know that someone might not take them off like the maintenance guy like going around the city and be like oh really fucking googly eyes <laughs> instead of be well and it's not spray paint so I, I'm not a big fan of the graffiti tagging things and stuff like that, I just feel it's mean. You know, I get it as an artist, but I would never put something permanently on something. So the sticky ones were like, 
perfect. And I was like, the chances are they're going to fall off and Street Troop is going to get them. And, uh, but it, another thing that, you know, people see and just kind of laugh. I was, I, when I was looking and researching online, I was like, like, I didn't know it was a whole thing. I was like, you got to be freaking kidding me. I was like, this is like the coolest thing in the world. And I got like these giant ones that I put on my washer and then down where I was painting. So like every time I would like spin cycle, they would be like, <laughs> it was just like, I couldn't handle it. It was like cracking me up so much. I'm just like, my roommate's like, what are you doing in the basement? What, what is so funny down there? I was like, you got to come see this. Because the washer was like a cra one of the crazy washers. And it would just, I just lost it. It just fucking cracked me up. And then uh, I had to take them off because it was just, it was too much. <laughs> I couldn't, I was actually excited for when the spin cycle came on. I was like, you got, anyone that was at the house, I was like, you got to come see. This is the best thing in the world. But I took them off and put them on my fireplace. So, yeah, you survived a fire in your apartment. And yeah, it seems like forever ago, but. I always, I, it's always in the back of my head, you know, anytime, you know, all the time. It's one of those things where at the time I didn't, you know, I didn't walk to the hospital. I mean, yeah, I lost a lot of paintings, you know, pretty much everything. There's a few things I still have. I mean, my, my brother went and salvaged pretty much everything he thought I would want. And, uh, you know, it was all, you know, they had to be cleaned and all that stuff. You know, he packed up his car, him and his friend of his. They got, even though a lot of stuff was destroyed, they got everything. They, he still took everything. All my books, you know, even melted movies, he pretty much knew I would be the one to want to go through this stuff to see what was salvageable. So, you know, and that was that was really nice of him. You said it's always in the back of your mind. I mean, like, it, it's got to be pretty traumatic. I mean, have you taken, like, are you more precautious about how you have your things around now? Or, like, or are you more aware of, do, like, do you have smoke alarms up? After the hospital, I went to my parents and uh, a friend of mine, I wasn't going to come back to Lancaster. And a friend of mine uh, just got a studio down on South Prince Street. Uh, Ryan Blythe, which was a local art glass blower, and he ended up moving to Seattle. But he told me that he he built a little room for me, and said that, you know, basically told me you have to come back to Lancaster. He's like, that's not, you know, you were you were doing art, you're, you know, the city's gonna come around to the whole art scene. He's like, you need to come back, and I have a place for you. He's like, paint me the biggest painting, uh, you ever painted. Uh, as a gift for giving you a place. It was basically as big as my parents' house, the back of the house, because I stapled it to the roof. And uh, I think it was like, I want to say like 25 foot by like 45 foot. I don't know. It was it was huge. And I sat out there and, you know, I did like the underpainted. And my neighbors behind my parents, they were older couple, they, they would sit there, they said they would sit there and drink coffee and watch me paint this picture for like three weeks and, uh, you know, change the face. He's like, the, 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 the guy really liked, because it was a nude, and <laughs> she, she was like, I had to close the curtains because he just wouldn't stop staring at your painting. And, uh, but it, it was the biggest painting I ever painted. And, when I finished it, I packed up and uh, my brother brought me back. I stayed there for about a year, got back on my feet. And, uh, you know, now with, you know, and, and that whole time, it was a giant warehouse, so I felt safe because if, at least if it caught on fire, I had, I had trouble sleeping and stuff for a while, but at least if it caught on fire, uh, it wouldn't burn down. Sure. So uh, I felt really comfortable. It was funny too because in that area behind it was part of the warehouse, but it was abandoned and they were only using the one warehouse. And some kids set it on fire. <laughs> and I woke up and there was like fire people in the place and everything. I was like up all, 
on this little tiny, uh, I guess you would call it like a loft and uh, that they built. And uh, that scared the shit out of me. But there was a point, like maybe two or three years, or even now I still do it where I'll like unplug everything. You know, I won't have things plugged in. You know, I'll make sure, I'll go and double check that I turned everything off. And, uh, you know, it's really, it's just hard, you know, still, you know, especially with like, I don't like candles. I don't like, I like fire. I like looking at fire, but that memory will, will be forever, you know, waking up in that, you know, that place burning. You know, I don't know if I'll ever be comfortable, you know, you know, every time I fall asleep, you know, I think, you know, what, you know, is that going to be something that I'm going to wake up to again? You know, which is always in my mind. Where do you see yourself going from here? Um, I don't know. I'm really liking, like, these other little projects I'm doing, like the rock thing. And mm -hmm. even though, like, you know, I, I won't do it in the wintertime because of the snow and stuff like that. Uh, but it seems like these little projects, you know, I start doing, like, the robot heads almost, you know, out of, like, found objects. But like, it seems like these little projects keep popping up in my brain and I keep adding to it. So it's like you get the rocks, the googly eyes, and now the robot he heads. And then I have like robots I build out of fo found objects that I've been doing for years that I don't do them a lot, but I have like all these storage bins and be like, that bin is just anything, could be all eyes, that bin could be all legs. You know, so they're all there, it's in my mind. But I I like these little projects to keep popping up, and uh, I think I'll keep adding to them, and you know maybe the rock thing will stop, and I'll have room for something else. But uh, yeah, I think these little projects and just keeping busy painting too. You know I don't want to ever stop doing that. 